this anniversary of St. Lucia's 25 years of independence, it is a very special pleasure to be speaking with Sir John Compton, first Prime Minister of St. Lucia. Sir John, you were Prime Minister, the Prime Minister who took St. Lucia into independence in 1979. You are described as the father of independence. Some speak of you also as the father of the nation. What are your memories, Sir John, of that historic moment 25 years ago? Well, you know, uh, an occasion like this, you're filled with emotion. It was a very emotional one to see the flag of St. Lucia go up and to hear the cheering crowds and to see exactly, the, well, we've done it. We have come to add us, as it were. We have accepted responsibility for our own affairs. But I must tell you that uh, independence for St. Lucia alone was not my first choice. Uh, when in 74, when they literally broke up and everything, we were trying to get a union of the Windward Islands. And while we were doing that, at the same time we were doing that, uh, Grenada was negotiating with the British uh, for independence alone. Mm -hmm. And once Grenada had gone, we took the decision that we cannot, as in the words of Errol Barrow, we can't be hanging around the corridors of the colonial office after closing time. So we took the decision in 74 to go for elections, to go for independence. For independence. Mm -hmm. Yes, that was after yes. the 74 elections, right. yes. So John, you've always, in what you've just said, always been in favor of a one Caribbean, Caribbean unity. You see yourself and us as Caribbean people and you're still committed to that, obviously. Yes, I am. And I, well, I, I, it's mm -hmm. still uh, my hope mm -hmm. in, before I, shuffle off this mortal coil, as Shakespeare would say, yes. to, to see us closer together as one people. Because uh, uh, the way the world is going, yes. there's no place for little mini states, as they call them. Yeah, look at the uh, Nevis, what's happening in Nevis today. Uh, you know, it's, uh, it's I think it's just the, the, the pride of politicians. Mm -hmm. It's not really, the, you, you look at it under the skin, it's really, yes. the, the, Ambition of politicians. Of individual yes, men. Yes. Let's come back to St. Lucia in 1979. Yes. How do you remember that period of St. Lucia's history, pre independence, around independence, a very turbulent period? Oh, what was. are your memories of that period? Oh, it John? was. It was a frightening one. Uh, we, mm -hmm. from 1978, in preparation for independence, mm -hmm. uh, the Labour Party wanted elections before independence. And we said, no, that there's, there's never been any uh, in, in the history of uh, negotiations with the British. Never any country has been forced to go into elections except with the choice of the, of the political leader, the prime minister. This is his, his, his choice. And I was not going to bow to this. And there was not the popular demand. It was a political demand. And there was a lot of confusion. Uh, uh, prior, to, prior to the elections, we had the civil service strike, we had the mm -hmm. teachers strike, we had all type of confusion. Uh, we had threats, mm -hmm. etc. It was really, uh, looking back at it, mm -hmm. it was really a, a frightening one for me personally. Mm -hmm. I've, I felt sometimes I was personally in danger. Mm -hmm. But of course, you were part of history, you have to soldier on. Yes. How have you seen St. Lucia changed, Sir John, in these past 25 years? For 17 of those years, you were Prime Minister, you were the leader. Well, it's the way St. Lucia accepted its responsibility. But people uh, talk about independence uh, and the birth of a nation like if it is a day. Mm -hmm. St. Lucia had a long time in preparing for independence. The preparation for independence started, I would say, from 1951. Yes. Adult suffrage? From adult language. suffrage, when people start uh, given the opportunity to, to, to elect their own leaders, yes. although they had the responsibility, but they had no power. Mm -hmm. The power still abided with the governor and the administrator, etc., etc. But people start looking towards their own, towards their own to do things for them, rather than looking outside. They start looking within themselves and start doing things for themselves. And uh, there you've, you had the 51, then you had in the first ministerial system in 56, mm -hmm. 
Then you had... You were already part, 56 or 57. When did you uh, first enter the house? I entered the house, in. I went to the house in 54. 54, okay. Yes. Mm -hmm. And I was, but I was in the executive council from yes. 54. Mm -hmm. Then uh, I left uh, and came a minister in 58. Yes. So the preparation started yeah, from yeah. then. In fact, just let me interrupt to say that this year, in fact, would mark 50 years, you know, since you're entering into public life as it will, 54 to 2004. Yes, yes. Okay. I, ent I entered yes. in September right. of, uh, 54. of 54. And just to remind, especially our young listeners, you represented? I, re I represented first. There, was, mm -hmm. there, there were eight, the time, yes. there were eight uh, mm -hmm. electoral districts. Yes. I represented the eighth electoral district, mm -hmm. which is Miku and Denry. Right. And I represented uh, Miku and Denry until uh, this, they were split up, Miku from Denry, and I chose Miku. Then afterwards, of course, Miku was again cut up, and I, I, I represented Miku south. south yes. So I pushed myself further south. <laughs> yes, so okay. I started from Denry and Miku, mm -hmm. then Miku, Miku, yes. Miku, the whole of Miku, south, then Miku yes. south. So when I existed, I was... Getting near and nearer the yeah. door. <laughs> <laughs> yes, indeed. So after, in fact, uh, after more than 50 years in public life, uh, after 29 years as Prime Minister of St. Lucia, coming back from those early days, what do you consider, Sir John, your major achievements, your major accomplishments? Well, I don't know. There are many. People start mm -hmm. looking at the physical things, uh, as you built uh, a dam or you joined Pigeon Island or you did. No, no, no. I, I would like to be remembered the part I played in education. When we you speak about preparation for education, you know, we, we were doing, as it were, uh, we were called upon, like the Israelites of old, to build, make bricks without straw. We had to create a nation. We had two secondary schools. If you speak about a nation is built on its people, we had two secondary schools. The total population entering secondary school uh, when we came, came into independence, was just over 300, St. Joseph Convent and St. Mary's College. And we had to find the civil service, we had to find a foreign, a foreign, uh, foreign service, we had to, to, to meet the challenges of the times, we had to get people to take the responsibilities, to, to be uh, managers of banks as they are now, to managers of corporations, etc. All of these things we had to create within this very short time. The people just were not there. We had to educate them. So when we took a conscious decision, and I think I must at this stage give Alan Buske the credit yes. of when we were speaking about what do we do to celebrate our independence? What do we do? Some say you must build a, a, a monument, you must build this, you must do that. And Alan Busque said, you know, what, you should, what we should do, we should make secondary education free. And of course, that was always in our mind, but I remember the person who really galvanized that in, in the cabinet was Alan Busque. Let's just make secondary education free. But you, make, you can make secondary education free, but you had to get a number of things. First, the physical plant. Yes. You had to get the schools. Mm -hmm. And schools are just buildings. Yes. You had to get the teachers. And having got the teachers, you have to train them. So it was a big task of building, building, building this nation. Yeah. From, as I said, it started from even before we decided on to make it free legally. Yes. But we started the the whole preparation to get the Sir Arthur Lewis Community College, it was not that. Mm -hmm. It was just started with just a teacher's sixth training form, college. college right. Te teachers, te no, teacher's, teacher's training. training college, they right. went to sixth form and right. went there. So that mm -hmm. is where we started in building this nation by building, educating the people. Yes. You know, there is a, a Chinese saying. He said, if you want to if you're planning for a year, yes. they say plant rice. Mm -hmm. We would say plant bananas. Yes. If you're planning for 10 years, you plant trees. Mm -hmm. But if you're planning for a generation, you educate your people. Mm -hmm. And that is what we're doing with a conscious effort yes. to educate our people. 
What about your contributions and your achievements of yourself and your government, of course, of the day, in terms of the other major sector, agriculture? Because you oversaw the transition from sugar to bananas, am yes, I right? In terms yes, of sort of yes. speak a bit about this, Sir John, and well, this especially was, bananas. And yes, this was one one of the dangerous times. You know, the, the sugar is a legacy of colonialism, a legacy of slavery and colonialism, and still we had this residue of it uh, in the sugar valleys. And they were always restless people. People, any time you want trouble, it came from the valleys because the people had no roots. When I came back from England, I started, because my family are from the East. That is why, my, that is why I had my political roots. My family, generations of them lived in Miku and Denry. And when I came then I saw what was happening in Denry. I decided, well, I, of your son, I could not allow this to happen. So I proceeded to dismantle whatever way his, his stories would put <laughs> the it. The stories of you is quite a radical. Yes, I know, no I know, talk. I know, right, you know, yes. uh -huh. however much yes. to dismantle the system. But mm -hmm. when you dismantle, you have to build. Yes, of course. Dismantling the sugar industry. What do you put in this place? And the banana industry came. Yes. And I pushed it and get the small farmers to get into bananas, get, get, get them the credit, get the, the institutions organized, like the Banana Growers Association and all these things, to bring the farmers, give, empower the farmers, so that they, because there was a market for their crop, they were marketable themselves. Yes. They could go to the bank and borrow money. And that built a new, completely new class. Because then the whole modern St. Lucia came out of all of that. Exactly. All that is why I yes. grieve so much to see what is happening to that no, industry. Now, you also, of course, in your day, um, planted the seeds of the tourism industry, which is big now. Um, I think of uh, Peter Begas and um, Wilfred um, St. Clair Daniel, was it? Yes, yes. So yes. speak a bit about tourism now. We've spoken education, agriculture, and tourism, and your own beginnings in that area. Well, we... Uh, the, the, uh, the hotel, the Villa Hotel, was the big hotel we had there. Yes, the Villa Hotel and San Antoine. This was our totality. Are we talking about the 50s, 60s? Yes, our totality of tourism in the south. We had the, the, the Clouds Nest by Gilded Williams. That was our totality. Then the, we had the American bases here. Reedway was part of the American base. And that was handed over to us <coughs> by the Americans on the, after the bases, the clothes closed, closed down after the war, it was handed over to us. I remember myself receiving the handing over. What year uh, was this, you remember, just historical purposes? 62. 62, yes. okay. I remember handing it over. And what you have it, what do you do with it? Mm -hmm. Then we tried to market it, mm -hmm. tried to get hotels. We did, then we got the British to assist us. Uh, the colonial, the, it was Commonwealth Development Corporation. They agreed to build hotels in, in these areas. Uh, and so the, the, what the solution hotel is now, it, it was then the, uh, the, the Caribbean hotel. Yeah, there was the was St. Lucian, was it? No, it wasn't the St. Lucian. No, I the name of it. Sancho Beach. San, the St. Lucian Beach. Beach, 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 Beach Hotel yes. Radio, that's right. Yes. And later on you had the Carrie Blue Hotel. Yes. Uh, right. and, but the St. Lucian Beach, we yes. started off that. And, but it was a disaster. Okay. People had to be carried off with big bumps from mosquitoes, mosquitoes and sand flies, yes. carried off okay. to their planes. And that is pre the causeway. No, no, that's, okay. that's caused the causeway. That's caused, that's something yes. too. That's yes, right. that's so was, exactly. because of that, yes. we tried everything to do to yes. clean that swamp. Yes. Because it was a filthy mm -hmm. swamp. Mm -hmm. Then we, I got consultants in. Yes. They told me all type of things about spraying. Mm -hmm. But one, Moses Matalon from Jamaica, Jamaica he yes. came and said, look, you better, you can't fill that swamp, you better have to drain it. You have to. So we went and created right. a lagoon, as it were, then. And from that, that is the seed of the modern tourism. Indeed. Okay, we started there. But you have to get people in. You can't have big hotels. They wouldn't come 
on Westic did the flights. So we, we look, what else do we have? We got the bean fields that were at the American base handed over to us. I then also received the handed over. But it was too short for the jets. Mm -hmm. So we had to get the Canadians in. We got the Canadians to help us to extend the airport to accept the jets. The other thing, you had your hotels yes. at one end of the country mm -hmm. and your international airport on the other end. Mm -hmm. How do you join them? Indeed. Right. So hence the East Coast Road. The network, one thing leads to another. Yes. People don't understand, don't remember mm -hmm. that it used to take you to go to Verfort was a day mm -hmm. and to come back from yes. Verfort was a day. Yes. So to go to Fairfort for two days, <laughs> yes. nearly as long, uh, well, much longer than the tele <laughs> yes. to going, going to New York, other part of the world, yes. uh, other part of the world yes. Yes. because the road was so bad. So we then mm -hmm. connected the airport to the capital and to the tourist area. So that is the part that the St. Lucia beach played in leading to all the other things. One to the other to the yes, other. Yes, yes, yes. That's how it came yes. about. In fact, I can tell you, I was speaking recently with um, Prime Minister Anthony. He's given you full credit for that whole area of northern development and expressed admiration for your single-mindedness. And he has said, um, were he in your place in those days, he probably would have had to approach things in the same way. A whole single-mindedness, as you're just describing to us, setting your mind on what needs to be done and doing it. What about yeah, your style he, of leadership in those days? He didn't have the, the opposition that I have. You understand what he's giving you for you understand? that. He, he just didn't saying, have it yes, because they marched against it. Yeah. The same people are now living at camp. Mm. Yes. Were marching we, and cussing and yes, quarreling. Truly, but truly. But you know, there's one thing. Yes. Mm -hmm. With me, I, there's an idea. Mm -hmm. I have it. I knock it around with my friends and my, my colleagues, my, mm -hmm. my confidants and I see it as something that's workable, feasible, mm -hmm. and then I proceed to do it, yes. nothing stops me. Yeah, I think this is what he was expressing admiration for, single-mindedness of purpose. Nothing, you know, you nothing, focus and you, and you go for yes, it. Yes. Um, so John, how do you assess, after all your work of many years, for St. Lucia? How do you assess the place of St. Lucia? St. Lucia now in the wider Caribbean. You are a senior statesman of St. Lucia, a senior yeah. Caribbean statesman, recognized as such internationally and within the Caribbean. How do you see your St. Lucia in the wider Caribbean after 25 years of independence? What is our place in the well, wider Caribbean? Well, I'm glad to see that St. Lucia is still respected in the Caribbean. I still respect it. We know we can have uh, uh, the, the president of the United Nations. I mean, it's because we built, we had a reputation, we can be trusted. St. Lucia uh, took over from very early, uh, St. Lucia took over the leadership of the OECS. Yes. At that time, let us realize, let us look at the, at the time, the period in which St. Lucia became independent. We didn't become independent uh, alone, but around the same time, there was Dominica with Eugenia Charles. There was St. Vincent with Son Mitchell and myself. We took over the leadership of the OECS. And from there, we established St. Lucia's place. Indeed, that you began the OECS, as it were. Yes. That's right, yes. St. Lucia's place within the OECS. Yes. And from that platform, we then went to the CARICOM, where we produced leaders who were respected. So that St. Lucia has got a good reputation within the, the, the Caribbean, uh, Caribbean community mm -hmm. and even wider. Yes. In terms of contemporary movements, the movements that are going on, what you hear yourself within the Caribbean, among the leaders, towards deeper economic and political integration, and you have said earlier to me that you are committed to an integrated Caribbean, what is your evaluation of present movements, present efforts towards this, Sir John, well, as frankly as you want to speak? I think that we appear to be dancing the twist. Do you remember the twist? <laughs> yes, I the remember. Dance I remember, of the 60s? I remember that. Oh, yeah, young, yes. A lot of mm -hmm. movement, okay. but no forward motion. Okay. We're moving and moving and moving, but mm -hmm. we, there's no forward motion. The, uh, we're now being driven by the wider world. 
WTO. By the WTO. WTOs, yes. By the Free Trade of the Americas. We being, we not, we not in control of our destiny. We being dragged along. And do you see us resisting? Do you see our We can't resist. We, can't resist. we cannot all. resist. We are going to be. We what can we do? What can we do? Then? We can we can should do? have prepared ourselves wow. for these things earlier and got mm -hmm. first the the OECS common market, mm -hmm. the Caribbean community common market. We should have prepared for that. We had enough time to prepare for it, but we did not. So world events have overtaken us. Mm -hmm. You know, we should have seen what's happening in Europe mm -hmm. because we became independent around the same time. Yes as the European Union, together, yes. it was the European Economic Community. And from then, it was, it was the, the European single market. And now there's the European Union. Right. We should have seen what is happening there and prepare ourselves so that we can provide our own defenses mm -hmm. against this. But now we're dragged along. You I mean, you, you, you hear we talking about VAT. Mm. VAT is, is not really, did not come from the brain of the prime minister here or from the brain of the leaders, it was being imposed on us. It is something that we've got to swallow. But we just did not ready for ourselves. Once we start, once we achieve the, the paraphernalia of independence, we seem to have forgotten the wider field, the wider picture. So the, let me just come. We, this, is a, this is a historical interview. Yes. So let me just say, the problem we have in the Caribbean did not begin this year or last year. It began in 1950, 1960. And what happened then? When the British settled on the constitution of the Windows and Leewards before they settled on the Federation. So it gave this, the leaders of the small islands power, yes. or the appearance of power, the paraphernalia of power, which they're not up to now prepared to give up. It is that paraphernalia, is that siren, motorcycle escort, and the siren, and the wheelie yes, lee, paraphernalia. Okay. And look, what are you? They look, what did the goal call us? You were little specks of dust getting in other people's eyes. So you're just a nuisance in the world stage. Mm -hmm. So really, we, for in the, after in, independence, we did not use our independence in a way that will foster greater Caribbean unity. In fact, we use our independence to destroy, to keep our people further and further apart, in spite of the talk of Caribbean unity, etc., etc. So then to you, in a sense, of John, almost a very sober question, does the future look very grim to you in terms of when next for us as, as Caribbean peoples? It is grim for us as a people because we'll be swamped by the yes. world and we're not prepared. We cannot resist. Mm -hmm. We cannot be like uh, King Canute in the in the Lear's story. You, your Shakespearean, sit on the, on, the, on the beach and try to keep back the tide. We cannot keep back the tide. Yes but we have not learned to swim. Mm -hmm. So we'd be overwhelmed. In, in, a, in the next 25 years, there would not be a St. Lucia. Do you see a kind of return to a kind of colonialism, which I've read sometimes because somebody suggested this, we almost become American colonies or something? Do you no, think no, that no, is no, 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 that's not impossible. in the cards. That's, that's, that's not, not in the cards, no. Okay. No, but you will be client states. Okay. You like be, everywhere else. You will be client states. Yes. I mean, you, 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 you will be used. You have a vote in the United Nations, then you, you need it. Yes. You, you don't need you anymore. Mm -hmm. It has happened before. Yes. Let us look, let us look at the, the influence of the United States, the government, I'm yes. speaking the government. Right, yes. the, in the 1970s, early 80s, the United States was very interested in the Caribbean mm -hmm. because there was a danger of communism. Grenada. There was Grenada, there was Cuba, there was Guyana, there was Jamaica, and they think that uh, the, the, the red tide would engulf the, the Caribbean. And they were very interested, very anxious. Right. Now, the Grenada situation, 
were solved. Just solved, could not happen again. And mm -hmm. they've gone. Yes. No more interest in, in the Caribbean. Now, where is the interest now? Drugs. Mm -hmm. Are they giving us, helping us with economic, giving us economic assistance? Mm -hmm. Are they helping us financially? Mm -hmm. No, they're not. Mm -hmm. But they're pouring money in the Coast Guards, in the this, in the, in the that, in the military, not to give work to our people, mm -hmm. to divert them from the temptation of drugs, yes. but the taking causes to take preventive action, a lot of it which is very costly. We have to put all paraphernalia to our airports, and this and that, it costs us money mm -hmm. to defend the American, the United States of America from the drug menace. Well, we are paying for it, mm -hmm. indeed, see? So, yes, so, we are. So, so, John, let's come back to the local political scene a bit and talk about some of the people who influenced you, your own contemporaries. I think of the George Charleses um, from the 50s, your first entry into politics with whom you served as, as a, was it a minister in those days? Yes. The ministerial system. Yeah. Um, so I'd like to hear you say a bit about George Charles, but I also want at the same time to ask about George Odlum, the late George Odlum, recently late, who was your political adversary your ambassador to the United Nations, and most recently before his death, your partner in the controversial alliance. What are your thoughts about George Adlam, Sir John, and his, his legacy to us as a young well, independent you, nation? You, you, you want me to, you, you ask me the question, let's, let's go back, let's yes. go back to, uh, Start with, George uh, with my coming into politics. Yes. My, and we'll my, into my, coming to, my coming into politics. The, the person who really influenced me in one way to get into politics was Ali Lewis. Okay. Uh, he was then the president of, and people don't remember that, he was the pres first president and founding member of the St. Lucia Labour Party. Yes. Mm -hmm. Then I met with Le Corbinier, it's Carl Le Corbinier. Carl Le Corbinier, who replaced Ali Lewis. Then there was George Charles. I worked with George Charles. Uh, the relationship with myself and George Charles, I couldn't tell anybody that it was too amicable. We worked together in, during the sugar yes. areas because he represented one sugar valley, I represented the other. But once the, the things started to change, the, the political scene started to change, other people started coming into politics. Uh, people like uh, Morris Mason, Morris Mason. and uh, George not, George, not George. George Mallet was there before. I mean, we were not together. Oh, I'm speaking of then. I was a me, then a member of the Labour Party. There was uh, there was uh, Morris Mason. There was Monrose. Uh, with Busquet, yes. But I'm speaking about the uh, a certain type of people going. George Charles thought that we were we were challenging him. Generation divide? Is yes, normal, yes. And they, they called us mm -hmm. with contempt intellectuals. Mm -hmm. These intellectuals they, they want to take. Communists too, in those everything. Days? I, there wasn't a name that I haven't been called. Right. Okay. Uh, according to, <laughs> to, yeah. to Trudeau, he said, yeah. I've been called worse names by better people. But, <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> but uh, anyway. Yes, okay. the, That's history and the. That was there. The process Just the time. Time. the process. He was yes. there. I, I wouldn't say that. Uh, I was influenced in any way with sure. George Charles. I was yes. worked with him in okay. trying to get the, the, the problems of the Sugar Valley resolved. Yes. Yeah. Then there was Morris Mason, who was really, he was one of the best organizers we had. Morris Mason is the person really who created the present day yes. Labour Party, gave it a structure, okay. gave it a structure, gave yes. it a symbol, mm. gave it a constitution, All, right. That's All right. of that from Morris Mason. Okay. But once, while Morris Mason was working that way, yes. There was, he was being undermined. I mean, there was just jealousy creeping in. So we had to leave. Yes. Mm -hmm. And we left. Mm -hmm. Okay, then George Ogden, whom I knew, yes. you asked me about him, I knew yes. him from, from his boyhood. Yes. We were neighbors, or friends, etc. Yes. Come, he came to my home, I went to his home, etc. When he graduated from, from university, uh, the, and the position in the, the what's it called, the OECS, it was WISE of West Indies, West Indies States and Association, West Indies Associated States. The office was here, was it? 
Yes, his office was here. the post office somewhere. Yes, That's yes. Right. So I, I, uh, I recommended him, and he came back here. But he had his political ambitions, mm -hmm. and uh, he, his police, he believed that I was in his way. Mm -hmm. and we, then we, we had a type of what people call love-hate relationship. <laughs> yes. Uh, well, mm -hmm. for want of a better phrase, yes. that. Mm -hmm. uh, but I saw in him potential. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I saw in him potential. And his, his great potential, besides, of course, being in the arts and artists yes. and acting mm -hmm. and so on, his great potential, as I saw it, was in the international stage, yes. not in the local politics. Yes. And I tried to promote him from Weiss uh, when I had an opportunity. Uh, I see that uh, he was, I thought his talents were wasted here in, in, in what he was doing. Uh, I got the opportunity, I sent him off to the United Nations where he performed very well. I mean, he, he never missed a committee meeting. And within uh, less than two years, he was chairing this committee and that. So, but he thought his, his field was to be head of, in, in, and politics, mm -hmm. and I was in his, I was in his way, mm -hmm. and I wasn't get out, wouldn't get out. Mm -hmm. So he tried in one way. So let's not get there. Yes, no, but that All is right. I I mean, the history of the day, the men. Ah, uh, well, means, yes, 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 okay. yes, but okay, still yes. How do you rate Sir John? Then following on from that, and it's right. like a question for you. And please answer frankly. How do you rate the present crop of solution politicians, both the present government also? the op opposition, I mean your own UWP and the politicians coming up. What do you see when you look at the political field broadly, both on the government side and the non-government side? As an older politician, what would you say to these young ones? But how do you rate them? What do you see happening among see? politicians? And well, I think they, they came in with great promise. You're speaking about the present government? Yes, okay. they came with great promise. I, uh, you know, with people, yes. I've been around too long, okay. the same face, the same voice, okay. offering the same solution. You must work hard. Yes. You must educate yourself. Mm -hmm. You must save money. All of these things, you know, I, we heard that before. Yes. Okay. You understand? So now let's have a change. Mm -hmm. You had a change. You came with great promise. And to me, they've lost their way. Okay. They've lost their way completely. The, the, f the foundation that we laid, they could have built on it and remain in power for I don't know how many years. But build on what's there, don't try to destroy it. Yes. You know, they try, they try very, mu very much to airbrush me out of history, you know, or to try to discredit me. You can't do that. You can't do that. I've gone, you're like throwing stones at the moon. You can never hit it, you know. So, well, but when you say it that's was a, a dis okay. it's a disappointment, yes. you know. The, for instance, we started the when we had the opportunity. Remember, let, let's just look at, at St. Lucia independence. Let's just look at it in three stages. Yes. The first, seventy-nine to eighty-two, yes. pushed us back about ten years. We had to rebuild St. Lucia, like in the in the words of Kipling. You had to build them up with worn out tools. And I remember in 80, 80, 82, the, the thing that came up into my mind when I was, when I was re elected, that if you'd seen the things you gave your life to broken and stoop to build them up with worn out tools, that is what. You had to start again. So between. We push back 10 years. People don't know. Yes. People don't realize. Yes. Economically they, and otherwise? In in economically, way. socially, in every way. We were pushed back 10 years. The, the country was divided. There was hate. You had to, to work to reunite the country. In eight, so we, I'm, I'm taking it from 79 yeah. until 85. I did not see my way out of the, the 79, 82 disaster until 85. Then we had the elections in between in 87, which yes. gave us a very narrow majority. Yes, you couldn't do what you wanted. Mm -hmm. Then you had the, the position from 92 
onwards, in which we had a more comfortable majority. But the things that we'd started, the things that should give us building the foundation for independence, they have not followed through. Everything we want to do is to change. We change the name of this and change the name of that. And a lot of cosmetics. When, as we said earlier, we should spend our time to build up our strength, to face the international community that's now not friendly. Let's take education. Uh, we, we look at education, as I said, it's a basis for the development of a country, it's particularly a small country with no natural resources. Yeah, I wouldn't say natural, I mean, let me say physical, because your, your, your brains or your people are a natural resource. But without physical resource, you had to educate your people. And you had to look and to see for what are you educating them. Yes. You look 10 years down the road and see the children who are entering school. 10 years from now, what type of society it would be. Right. It's a, it would be a technological age. So the whole thing was really to start the basic retraining of your teachers for, to meet the technological challenges the retraining of your teachers so they can impart the knowledge into those children to meet the challenges of the future. We haven't done that. We have, we have not. The curriculum has not changed. You have a number of children that don't uh, make it to, to, the, to the senior Second, secondary, secondary schools. schools yeah. Where are they? They're lost. Go to the, the bodily prisons. And that's where they are. You know, you can't use your resources, the resources of this country, it being abused and misused, instead of directing it into training your people to meet the challenges, we abuse it. We, we don't, we have not prepared them for the challenges. And therefore, what do you get? Immigration, despair among the young, turning to drugs, turning to crime, etc. These are the challenges that we face mm -hmm. now, today. We have to recapture the young. We have to get back. People have to start talking and seeing the, the dangers that we are, we are fa facing. And the no safety net for us. Yes. Well, on, on the positive side, Sir John, uh, what, do you, what makes you feel good about St. Lucia? You've told us your concerns, definitely, about the contemporary social issues, um, the leadership, even the wider Caribbean. But as you sit and look back, I mean, your achievements, as you've said earlier, what makes you feel good about St. Lucia today? When you, you know, sit and look at St. Lucia. The one thing that St. Lucia can feel proud of is its people. Okay. You know, we can look back and see how much we've achieved. There's how much more we could have achieved you know, that is probably being critical of myself or others, but how much more could have achieved? But in the fact, look to see how much we have achieved since independence or even before. Now, as I, we started this conversation, that independence is not a day. Like examination is not a day. It's how you prepare to go into the classroom and answer the questions. Our people started prepare preparation for independence. I started at 51. I'll even go further back. When the small, for, for using a contemporary word, the black middle class, start emerging and they created certain institutions to break the monopoly of the plantocracy, the Agriculture Association, the Cooperative Bank, the Coconut Growers, the Cooperative Bank. Remember the, the barefoot fellow could not go into this only bank that was in St. Lucia. They start creating those things. They start building these institutions. And we built on them. We built on, on these, these institutions. And that is what 
by the time we were ready for independence, we had a number of institutions already in place. We had, for instance, when you went into, you speak about Rodney Bay development. For the Rodney Bay development, we had in place the National Development Corporation. I have to speak to them sometime. We had the housing, UDC, the Urban Development Corporation, to see about housing. We had the, the Mortgage Finance Corporation. We had, we had a number of these, the National Development, National uh, Insurance Scheme. All of these were the bricks on which we built our independence. And the young people at that time that grew up around that time are now managers and middle managers. So that is what gave me hope, that they see the opportunity and they can take, they've taken that opportunity and they brought us to where we are today. In many ways you would say, perhaps what you've described to us is your legacy to St. Lucia in a sense, if you were to step back a bit and say, yes. oh, whatever left us, yes. your legacy yes. to St. Lucia. Yes, to, to have created the very created, yes. institutions that, on which St. Lucia can be built. Yes. Truly independent as, as far as is possible. Give the people a yes. stake in their own yes. country. Give them a stake. That is what we try to do. You know, people looking back, the motto of St. Lucia, the land, the people, and the light. The land. The land doesn't only mean the, the country of St. Lucia. Let's look back the land. I remember driving from a political meeting in Ansari and I was going to a political meeting in Denry. And after I left the village of Ansari, until I got to the village of Denry, I don't think one acre of land in that area was owned by St. Lucians. It was the Roseau Valley. Then you come over the hill, you met the cul-de-sac valley to the Bardelil, from the Bible, you met the Denry Valley. All of this. Foreign far known? Well, even they were not foreign known, yes. they were not ours. Not ours, yes. Now, what, what has happened today? Mm. Except for house spots and things like that, land that St. Lucians themselves consciously sold to others. Yes. All of it is owned by St. Lucians. Isn't that an achievement? It is very much so. Huh? Yes. And we didn't have to do like Mugabe. Mm -hmm. We didn't shed blood. We, we, we provided, we prepared the institutions, the St. Lucia Agricultural Bank, to give people the opportunity to buy land. And they could buy land because they had a crop, a banana crop, from which, which they could market and, and pay those loans. Mm -hmm. You understand? Yes. So these are things, when you look back, so that's the land, the people with two two secondary schools. Now they're 18 or 20. In that time, educate your people. So the land, the people, and the light to give them the education. So what we're doing is fulfilling the motto of this country, the motto that we gave. Let me give credit to who gave it, Hunter Francois. Minister of Education who started the education reform. Started it. So, you know, it's not me. Yes. It's a, I had a good you team. Would. Yes. You speak about tourism with Mallet, mm -hmm. with George Mallet. Yes. They started tourism from nothing, from, from, <laughs> from what was it? The, the, uh, the San Antoine oh, yes, and, <laughs> and, and the Villa. And the villa. Yes. That's where Mallet started. Look where we are today. You know, these are things when you look back. I think that we, it give us, it give me pride and hope. And on the other side, when I drive down and I see in some areas the kids on the block, and I go to Bordley and I see 400 youngsters, you know, and I, I hear the question of despair. I think what our people need is that fertilizer of hope to make the independence grow into a flourishing tree. 
Mr. John, I hope that as you've spoken with us today on this 25th anniversary of independence, that as even many of our young people have listened to you as an elder statesman, your experiences, that in spite of everything, the dark sides, but the positive achievements, that in fact they would feel hopeful. Any final remarks, Sir John, father of the nation, father of independence, before we go? Uh, let them look back. Let the, those, let, they should know. You yes. know, one thing, as you, you're a historian, I'm giving you a lot of credit. I <laughs> call you a historian. And call yeah, you, you call me historian. Yeah, and now a historian. Yes. You know, we must get our history together. Yes. Like we cannot allow the people of people of the present, including myself, yes. to distort history. We have to get down, get an objective, objective story of this country. See where we came from where we came from. Let us not go too far back in, in slavery, Colonial, because, yes. you know, and, and, and colonialism. Let, let us not look, do like, go crying in our hands all yes. the time. Agreed. Let us gather strength from our own achievements. Mm -hmm. for, gather strength and show that what we can do, what we have done, Therefore, what we can do by preparing ourselves for the future is preparation. You know, the, uh, as people speak about a genius, say genius is 1% inspiration, 99% perspiration. perspiration yes. We have the 1%. We have the 1% of inspiration. We have now to give the perspiration the physical, the intellectual, the organizational to build this country. Yes. That's what we have to do. We have, because if we look back, we see the 1% as inspiration. Now let us build on that by our own perspiration, by our own wanting to work, wanting to build. The world doesn't owe us a living. As I told the youngsters before, it's pr you're proud to be St. Lucian. You go out and be St. Lucian, you're proud. But let that pride not only be your birth certificate. Your certificate is, should not only be your birth certificate. You've got to go and educate yourself to meet the challenges. The world is wide open, wide open. Just now, as they, they ask us to dismantle our, dismantle our, our tariff barriers and do that so that you can have free trade, just now they'll ask us to dismantle our, our immigration policy. They'll they die, dictate our immigration policy and work permits and so all of this would have to go. And can we in our own country, would we in our own country be able to stand up, stand up for ourselves and not show is our, is our birth certificate, but I can meet the challenges of the world. Let us not hem ourselves in hem ourselves in, in insularity. Let's not hem ourselves in. Let us educate ourselves so that we can, the world is our oyster. We go abroad, we, where your birth certificate don't count, but your intellect counts. That's Mr. John Compton, father of the nation, father of independence, yeah, yeah, yeah. thank you very much for thank speaking you. with us. Thank you. Okay.